We're here on USS Macon Island and we'd like to introduce you to the different aspects of a food service operation on board a U.S. Navy vessel. We're going to review the various physical, logistical, and financial requirements that help feed over 300,000 sailors every day. We'll also touch upon some of the regulations, publications, and policies that guide a float food service on over 300 vessels. This isn't a how-to video. We'll briefly talk about certain regulations and administrative forms, but instructions on how to complete those can be found on MealTube. Just search for the topic name along with the words Navy Supply Community. And remember, when in doubt, check the pub. For food service, everything starts with the P-46. So how do you feed 300,000 people a day across the world? How do you provide quality food safely and ensure it's all properly accounted for? Cooking is just part of it, but there's so much more. And there are many more positions and responsibilities beyond just cooking the food. The Navy's food service operation incorporates concepts ranging from logistics, financial management, and event planning, as well as food preparation. But let's start at the beginning. Before you cook anything, you'll need food on board, whether you're sitting pier side in your home port or halfway across the globe in open water. Ordering food to eat is accomplished virtually the same way. The Food Service Management System version 3 or FSM is the key for managing food service operations on board your ship. FSM lets you order food from a variety of sources based on a preset menu. For the purposes of this video, we won't talk about the various ways the Navy acquires that food other than to say the details may differ, but FSM is still the starting point no matter where you are. The U.S. Navy utilizes a 21-day cycle menu. In other words, wherever you are in the world, you should be eating basically the same meal that day. And that cycle resets every 21 days. There are exceptions and ways to alter the menu, but the 21-day cycle menu is the primary driving force behind the Navy's buying and delivering food worldwide. This 21-day cycle menu is loaded into your FSM system and defines your preset menu. Again, there may be a few changes, but orders are driven based on these requirements. Just as if you were to order something online or buy something from the supermarket, ordering food on FSM costs money. But where does that money come from? And how does that money go to your ship? How does it leave the ship? To answer those questions, it will help to define some terms. The Basic Daily Food Allowance, or BDFA, is the amount of food required to feed one person per day and is expressed in dollars. The BDFA established by the DOD and is updated in the quarterly NAFSUP 7330. Your ship is funded to feed its crew based on the BDFA and the number of sailors currently stationed on board. For example, if you have 300 sailors on board today and the current BDFA was $10, the amount of money your ship will receive to feed everyone today would be $3,000. This process repeats every day of the year. FSM 3 tracks this money as your food budget. But again, ordering food to feed the crew costs money. This main difference between your food service operation and Amazon is the money isn't spent until you use the food to feed. Every food item in the storeroom has an associated cost. Think about it, lobsters cost more than beans. When you break out food items to feed the crew, the cost is deducted from your food budget. FSM 3 tracks these costs too. The idea is to match the amount of food cost to the amount your ship is budgeted from the BDFA. Just like at home, you never want to spend more money than you make. So if you eat lobster every day, you'll blow your budget. We call this an over issue. On the flip side, if you only eat beans every day, you're going to have money left over, which means you underfed your crew. We call this an under issue. The goal at the end of the year is to spend no more than you receive, but also not have any money left over. So now that we know a little on how food gets to the ship and how we track it, let's look at how a food service operation on board a ship is set up. A kitchen on board a ship is a galley. Depending on the size of your ship, there could be up to four separate galleys. Galleys contain all the equipment needed to prepare daily meals. Some may look familiar, others may not. There are also multiple spaces to eat. The enlisted crew eats in the mess decks, chiefs in the chief's mess, and officers in the wardroom. On some larger ships, the commanding officer may have his own mess. 
Regardless of where you eat, everyone gets food from the same place, and the 21-day cycle applies to all messes on board. Just like at home, the type of food determines its store's location. Each ship is equipped with at least one freezer, one refrigerator or reefer, and one dry storeroom. Larger ships may have multiple of each. All food not yet used for meal preparation is stored in these spaces. Each space is locked and managed by a responsible custodian. There are several positions that make up the food service operation on board a ship. And like with any other operation on board, a chain of command exists. Food service, often called S2 division, falls under the supply department on board all Navy vessels. The food service officer or FSO is overall in charge of food service operations. He or she will be accountable for food service inventory. On smaller ships, the supply officer and food service officer will be the same person. The leading culinary specialist or LCS is the highest ranking culinary specialist on board and manages the food service operation and all personnel assigned to the S2 division. The galley captain or galley supervisor is often junior to the LCS, but often the leading petty officer. He or she manages the watch captain and other galley personnel. The watch captains perform daily cooking functions and manage other galley personnel in their sections. The records keeper is the administrator of FSM3. He or she reports directly to the FSO and is a critical billet in the operation. The bulk storeroom custodian, or the jack of the dust, is responsible for the food storerooms on board the ship. He or she has a personal access to the locked storerooms and must maintain control of the inventory. Daily galley operations are performed by sailors under the culinary specialist rate. They are directly responsible for the quality and safety of every meal prepared on board. Certain positions in the food service operation are filled by sailors temporarily assigned to the division. Food service attendants or FSAs assist the S's in galley and mess operations. The mess deck master at arms is responsible for the operation and safety within the enlisted mess decks. Now that we've explored the who and the where, let's take a look at the how. There's a lot more to preparing three meals a day than just grabbing food and cooking it. Careful planning, control, and analysis go into each meal. Plus, we want to make sure the food looks and tastes good. Any food issued from the storerooms is carefully accounted for. We use specific forms to plan each meal and pass along cooking instructions. Both the NAVSEP 1090 and 1282 forms are used for issue and preparation. Again, we're not going to go into details on these forms, but how-to instructions are provided in the P486 and online on the MealTube website. Cooking meals for this many people might seem impossible, but the Navy makes sure everything you need to prepare food is at hand. Based on the 21-day cycle menu, FSM3 not only recommends how much of each item should be issued, but also tracks how popular any given dish is. And every dish has a specific instruction on how to be prepared based on standardized recipe cards. But even with FSM3 and instructions laid out, attention to detail is always required. Proper accounting of food inventory, both receiving and issuing, as well as ordering and consumption is accomplished by a variety of administrative processes. In addition, money collected for meals and daily head counts are required to balance the food service operation. This is accomplished with FSM3 and the use of various forms, including the 338, the 367, and 1334. Again, how-to instructions for these forms are found in the P486. The use of FSM3 and numerous forms on top of preparing quality food day-to-day -day can sound intimidating. Fortunately, there are a variety of schools available to culinary specialists Courses for leading CS, watch captain, and records keeper are just a few. Without a food service operation, no Navy ship could do what they do. Make no mistake, you set the tone on board for quality of life. A good ship starts with good food. The culinary specialist rate is one of the few in the Navy that can combine science and art. Even with computer systems, forms, and recipe cards, it still takes skill and talent to prepare and present a quality meal. 
We hope you found this brief useful. Remember, this is just the beginning. The Navy's food service operation has a legacy in both pride and uniqueness not found in any other service. As always, we encourage you to reach out and learn more. Thanks for watching.